In this session, we will discuss how to get your data into Bioconductor. We have seen Bioconductor has a list of convenient data containers such as expression sets and summarized experiment, and G-ranges that are useful for storing high throughput data from one or more samples. But how do you actually get your data in there? That depends a lot on the file format you have. And, uh, Bioinformatics have jokingly been referred to as the science of inventing new file formats, and there's some truth to that. We are dealing with many, many, many different types of file formats, and sometimes different people uh, misuse different file formats to store different types of data in them. This makes it hard to have a completely uh, uh, easy way of getting the data in. How easy it is to read in the data depends a lot on the application area you're dealing with. Let's start by discussing microarrays, which is by far uh, the easiest thing. In microarrays, you typically get raw data from the microarray vendor or the microarray scanner. Uh, the two big vendors, and there's obviously other vendors that are also supported by Bioconductor, but the two big vendors are Affymetrix and Illumina. And Bioconductor has a couple of packages for providing low-level support or low-level parsing of these binary or vendor-specific file formats. Now, as an end user, you shouldn't be using these packages. You should be using high-level packages that are uh, really taking the data and putting it into a container that's ready for analysis. Uh, the classic examples are AFI, which is an old package for analyzing gene expression data from uh, Affymetrix, Oligo, which is the newer and modern version of AFI that supports both Affymetrix and NimbleGen, and supports both expression and SNP arrays, and also expression-like arrays such as exon arrays. Then there's Lumi and Minfi for dealing with Illumina arrays. Minfi only deals with DNA methylation arrays. If you use these functions, there's usually one or more functions in, in these packages that just reads a directory full of files and put it into a ready-to-work-with uh, container. The other big application area is high throughput sequencing. And here the situation is a little bit less clear. So raw reads before alignments are typically provided in something called a FASTQ format. Um, this is, we have great support for reading in FASTQ files uh, using the short read packets. Um, the next step after you have uh, gotten the raw files is that you usually align them to the genome using uh, an aligner such as Bowtie or MAQ or BWA, or perhaps a junction-aware aligner such as G-Snap or Top Hat. And uh, storing aligned reads, uh, for storing aligned reads, we have a versatile uh, BAM format, BAM or SAM. Uh, one is a binary version of the other. Uh, and uh, these are being read, uh, these, we have access to these files uh, through the RSAM tools packets. Now, uh, FASTQ, BAM, and SAM files are fairly raw files. Uh, they're usually still a bit far away from uh, doing actual, from being ready for, for giving the data in, in a form that's easy to do analysis. And what happens after the BAM file is very uh, domain specific. So it's different from RNA sequencing to chip sequencing to DNA sequencing. And within these domain areas, it depends on, a lot on what you want to do with the data and what uh, pipeline you're running. So if you run a, if you have done RNA sequencing, you may be interested in getting gene level counts, or you may be interested in a simple in doing transcript assembly with a piece of software such as Cufflinks or Springtime. And how you deal with these uh, uh, things is, is, is quite different. Uh, the, the type of data they produce is quite different from each other. And uh, yeah. So what you need to know is you need to have a set of versatile tools that can read in different file formats and put it into a form that you want. And for next generation sequencing, the R track layer package is usually very useful. It supports, it supports BigWig and BigBet files, um, which we have seen uh, before. And uh, there are many uh, domains where these files uh, feature heavily. Then we have VCF files that is used a lot when you have done genotyping, uh, VCF and BCF, and there's a whole package called variant annotation that deals with this type of file format. Finally, we have text files. 
a lot of pipelines produces text files and it's up to you as a user to write a parser or to, to read in these text files. And hopefully most of the time it's really easy to read them in and sometimes it can be a real pain. So the main workhorse for reading in uh, rectangular uh, uh, data in text files in base R is called read.table. It has a lot of arguments. There's a lot of help pages on the internet about it. Uh, you can usually read in files with a lot of pain with read.table. I want to draw your attention to two recent developments. The reader package that has a, a set of versatile functions and the data table package that also has a very fast function. The reader package is a little slower than data.table, ta data but in my opinion, it's a little easier to use and a bit more versatile, so that's what I would recommend. Finally, you can get data uh, from publicly available data sets and it, from databases, and I guess if you're really uh, aggressive, you can upload your own data there and download it uh, using uh, a package such as, as GeoQuery that we have dealt with. There's also uh, a package called SIADB that does the same thing for the short read archive, and then finally the Array Express package that interfaces to the Array Express, Array Express uh, uh, database hosted at EBI. This was a quick overview. We have discussed uh, some of this functionality, and we will discuss uh, uh, some of this functionality in, in other uh, sessions.